And we are live. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. As always, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and this episode of Wrap It Up, as it has been all season long, brought to you by Clean Cuts Barbershop, 2013 Danforth Avenue in the east end of Toronto. Clean Cuts, the multicultural barbers that will always keep you fresh for any and all occasions. So go see Skip and the crew. And as a wise man once said, Tell them that I sent you. Check them out on Instagram at Clean Cuts Toronto or give them a call 416-917-4833 to book your appointments now. What a time to be alive, Raptors fans. Raptors win 105-92 in game four of the NBA Finals to take a 3-1 series lead. Again, I got to say it twice to make sure you hear me. Raptors win 105-92 to take a 3-1 series lead in the NBA Finals. I mean, I could end the podcast just by saying, what a time to be alive, shut this shit down, and then hit the streets. Because that's how I'm feeling right now. Crazy game for the Toronto Raptors. Kawhi Leonard, again, doing Kawhi Leonard things, just putting on a show. 36 points, 11-22 from the floor, 5-9 of nine from three, 9 of 9 from the free throw line, 12 boards from Kawhi, 4 steals from Kawhi. What more do you want from this man? The wise words from, I know I was bumping, uh, what more can I say all day today, but are you not entertained? This guy is amazing. And first off, shout to you guys for tuning in and rocking with us as you have all year now to the end. We're almost at the end, the finish line. Raptors one win away from the NBA Finals. But huge shouts to you guys who have been rocking with me here on the Wrap It Up podcast from the beginning. Huge shouts to you guys on Twitter, at Shell Alexander. Same thing goes for Instagram, at Sheldon Alexander. We take your comments and questions in both places. And hey, there's been times where I got a full crew, and there's been times where you just see me here, but the point remains, this is your show, people. So I'm always here taking your questions and comments. And all those fun things, both on the Twitter feed and on Instagram. So really appreciate you guys for rocking with this, the Wrap It Up podcast, because this is incredible. Started off with Kawhi Leonard, and I'm going to talk about Kawhi in a, for a while here. Because here's the thing. Over the past few seasons of the Toronto Raptors being in the playoffs, right? You watched a man named LeBron James just take the melt. And... For years, you probably wished and hoped that you would see a guy like that wear the Toronto Raptors uniform. And now we're getting to see that. You're seeing superstar performances in terms of seeing what a superstar does each and every night. When the team really needs you the most, you got to be able to count on what the superstar can do for you. And Kawhi Leonard, this was your classic playoff performance on the road in terms of just keep the game close, keep the game close, weather the early storm, which the Raptors did in the first quarter, hang around, hang around, and then boom. And Kawhi Leonard did such a good job of pacing himself because you got to remember, came out gunning in the first quarter, was keeping the game close when nothing was going down for anyone not named Kawhi. In fact, Kawhi had 14 of the Raptors' first 17 points in this game. Golden State was only up 23-17. to Kawhi had a big-time three at the end of that first quarter, but point remains. Raptors not named Kawhi Leonard in the first quarter were one of 13, and yet the Raps were only down six points. That's what your star player does. Keeps you in the game, on the road, to weather the storm. I've been saying it all year. A few things we've been saying all year. There's levels to this shit, and it's real spit, because here you go. Kawhi Leonard comes out, and the reason why your superstars are your superstars is because they travel. They play They play great no matter the weather, okay? No matter where you're playing, road, home, your superstars show up. And that crowd was rocking. Remember, people might think this could be the last game in the history of Oracle Arena, okay? This could be the final game there. So that crowd was rocking. That crowd was fired up. That crowd gave Golden State a boost to start this game. And the Raptors... It was an ugly game to start. Turnovers all around. I want to say like six combined turnovers within the first like six minutes of the game. It was super ugly to start. But Kawhi Leonard settled things down from the Raptors. And when no one else could hit shots, Kawhi could keep 
the team afloat. You're only down six after one quarter. And that's what Kawhi Leonard was able to do for this squad. And when you think about it, when you really think about it, that is what is the most important thing. Keep the game close and trust that your star player can win in. Now, here's the thing, okay? You look at how this game went. I just talked about the first quarter. Second quarter, Kawhi goes to the bench, and he did his job, right? That's how you got to look at it. Kawhi Leonard did his job in terms of keeping the Raptors afloat, and they needed to win those bench minutes because the Warriors come out in the second quarter with a lineup of Livingston, Cook, Igudala, Clay Thompson, and Boogie Cousins. If you're the Raptors, you need to win those minutes, regardless of who's on the floor. The Raps had their bench unit. Danny Green, Serge, Fred, Norm, and Siakam. And the Raptors were just able, they played positive minutes. You got good Serge off the bench. Serge had a quick six points. Serge was active. He was on the glass. He was doing all these things to keep the Raptors in the game. But also, it was key because nobody else other than Kawhi Leonard was doing anything. And when you're getting, at that point, when Kawhi's doing what he's doing, He's just buying time for someone else to step up and give the team a boost to kind of relax things, right? Allow the rest of the squad to take a deep breath and understand that, hey, we're good. We're okay. This crowd is loud, but we're okay. We got this game, right? And Serge did that. also want to give Nick Nurse some credit because he was able to buy some minutes because he was just trying to find a rotation or someone to get the Raptors some buckets anyone and he found that with Serge and he didn't want to take him off the floor he had Serge play with Marc Gasol for a bit in this game because he was just riding the hot hand of Serge but also it was such an ugly game that provided so many missed shots that meant you needed to get on the glass and the Raptors were missing mad rebounds early on in this game but having that little spurt with Gasol and Serge Ibaka on the floor you ended that run of Golden State just dominating, just dominating. Sorry, I'm reading a text message right now. My phone is blowing up right now about text messages about where we're going after this podcast, which is just amazing. But let's get back to business for a second. The Raps were able to dominate the glass, and that kept things just in motion while Kawhi rested. And now you take those runs, and hey, Clay Thompson, I'm going to give him a little bit of credit. Not going to give him a lot of credit because again i'm here to remind you guys all the time that clay thompson missed the end of the second quarter or sorry the end of game two and all of game three because he hurt himself flopping so there's only so much credit i'm going to give clay thompson at any point but he comes back in this game and he has 28 points 11 of 18 in this game six of 10 from three cool clay hit his shots he played well but i want to go back to the second quarter because in that second quarter, Klay Thompson knocked down a couple shots. He turned around and hit a couple jumpers over Kyle Lowry. And your man's Klay Thompson was feeling himself. He turned around and he gave that Sam Cassell big boy dance, right? You know the big boy dance. For those who might not be familiar with the Sam Cassell big boy walk, he kind of holds his hands to emphasize that he has big balls. That's, I guess that's the best way to describe the Sam Cassell dance, right? Problem with this is Clay Thompson brought that out in the second quarter. And me crushing Clay Thompson for this isn't hindsight. Because if you follow me on Twitter, if you're watching this podcast on Twitter, that means you can go back and you can check the Twitter timeline. Because if you check the Twitter timeline, I was here, I was here tweeting out at the time, LOL, remember that Clay Thompson Selly in about an hour and a half. And the thing, the reason why that was important to me was because two things. One, the Warriors annoy me. They're such front runners, right? Like there's so much front runners. They're the epitome of front runners. And having Kawhi do what he does against the Warriors is almost the perfect thing. Because while while Clay Thompson's out here doing the Sam Cassell dance in the second quarter, Kawhi's out here just getting buckets and keeping the Raptors in the game. And showing absolutely no emotion at all. Right? Clay Thompson's doing all that. And such an ugly first half from the Raptors. The Raptors were only down four points at the half. Only down four. As a team, they were two of 17 from three. As a team, they shot 35% from the floor in the first half. 
and yet they were only down four points. And again, the Clay Thompson big boy walk. Meanwhile, Kawhi's just getting busy keeping the wraps in the game. Just sums up the two teams perfectly. And if you go back, and I'm going to give a shout to Alex here in the chat, the chat group. Alex on Instagram says, are Clay and Joel Embiid related? Because remember, Raptors fans, we've seen this before in each and every round, no? Moments where teams on the road have been trying to rattle the Raptors with their over-celebrating or just something, right? So you're talking Clay Thompson with his big boy walk in the in the second quarter. If you go back to the Buck series, remember Raptors were up and Giannis comes down the floor. I think he started the game on like a 6-0 run or something. He had two loud dunks. I remember Giannis was screaming, going crazy. I forget what game it was in particular. It might have been game five in Toronto. No, sorry. It would have been game four. It would have been game four. And Giannis came out screaming early on. And hey, I was right here to tell you guys, all that yelling and screaming, you're only down five or whatever it was at the time. doesn't really matter. It's just two points. And what you see from this Raptors team is they don't get rattled. Go back to the Embiid sellies, and it's the same thing. This team doesn't get rattled. They take on the demeanor of their star, Kawhi Leonard. And what did Kawhi Leonard do in this game? Well, I mentioned he had 17 points in the first quarter, making sure the Raps stayed in the game, kept the game close. He didn't score in the second quarter. Why? Because the game was close. It was right where it needed to be. Third quarter <laughs> is a different story. Okay, reminder, Raptors only down four. Now, huge credit. I'm going to credit the third quarter because I think this was a turning point of the game, obviously, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight Kawhi Leonard. I'm going to highlight Nick Nurse. Adjustments made by Nick Nurse. First off, Nick Nurse starts Fred Van Fleet on Steph Curry to start the third quarter. You got to remember, the only time the Raptors were losing in this series or played poorly in this series was the six-minute spurt in game two where the Warriors went on an 18-0 run to start the second half. It's the only time the Warriors have really dominated this series. It was a six-minute run, correct? You can't let that happen anymore. Fred Van Fleet has proven that he's been at least able to slow Steph Curry, make Steph Curry work for his baskets, right? When you're at a certain level of an offensive player, you're not going to stop that guy. You're going to try to contain him. And Fred's done a very good job on Steph. So the adjustment by Nick Nurse, we've seen it now two games in a row. You start Freddie on Steph to start the third quarter. First things first. And then I go back to gassing Kawhi Leonard because Kawhi is that dude. Remember, wraps down four, first possession, Kawhi comes down, buries a three, one-point game. Next possession, Kawhi gets a steal on Draymond. Again, there's levels to this shit. Superstars do it on both ends of the floor. Kawhi steals it off Draymond, comes down the floor, buries another three, Raptors up two. That, again, there's levels to this. Your superstar taking over. And the best part of Kawhi Leonard's game is everything's at his pace. Because he would, went scoreless in the second quarter. I want to say he missed five straight shots, whatever it was, but under control. Everything's at his pace. He knows when it's time to kill. And to start that third quarter, to knock down a three, get a steal off Draymond, knock down another three, and give your team the lead that early in the third. That, like, how, how are, could you possibly be the rest of the Raptors and not follow that lead? Right? couple plays later, Fred Van Fleet knocks down a three. Another play later, Marc Gasol knocks down a three. Serge checks in the game, and we already talked about Serge giving you great minutes in the first half. Well, Serge checks back in, gets a block, knocks down a three. Now, what, what a swing by the Raptors in that third quarter. Now they start to take control of the game. And you following the lead of Kawhi Leonard. This is what players do on the road. And after that, to me, that was a swing in the game. Draymond finally gets called for a technical foul. Kawhi hits free throws, then drains a jumper over McKinney. And from then on to the end of the game, it was pretty much the Warriors trying to get it down to single digits, somewhere around eight. And the Raptors just not, they're bending, but not breaking, to use the old cliche, right? But again, bigging up Nick Nurse, the adjustment of putting uh, Fred Van Fleet, 
on Steph to start the third, cool. The other adjustment, okay? Nurse comes out of a timeout. Warriors made many runs. Nurse did a good job of calling timeouts, okay? Nurse comes out of a timeout with what I like to call, to quote the wise man named Steph Curry, that janky defense, in which the Raptors went to the box and won. And anytime, we told you this to start the series. Go back and listen to a preview podcast, and I know I'm just some dude on Twitter, right? Watching the game on my couch. I don't have a media pass. I'm just a dude on my couch watching the game at home, okay? But from our preview show, with no Kevin Durant in the lineup, everybody not named Steph and Clay. They're not a threat. Those guys don't want to shoot. Those guys are shook. They don't want to shoot. They're only going to shoot if they're wide open, and even still, it's a maybe. So as soon as Clay Thompson went to the bench in the third quarter, Nick Nurse brought out his janky defense at box and one on Steph Curry. And Steph can call it janky all he wants. He can call, say the Raps are disrespecting Andre Gudala by leaving him wide open. But facts are facts. Tape don't lie. First possessions. Warriors 24 second violation. Couldn't even get a shot off. So then they try to sub in Quinn Cook. Maybe try to get some shooting on the floor. Next possession, Quinn Cook, wide open for three, misses. Raps still up eight. And while this is happening, the Raps are doing a good job because the Warriors, two things happened there to end the third. The Warriors picked up dumb fouls at half court trying to stop the Raptors getting out on the fast break. But then also, Kawhi Leonard did his job of closing, meaning knowing when to get to the free throw line to get points to stop runs. And that was massive. Kawhi closing out that third quarter. He's hitting jumpers. He's getting to the line. He was doing it all. 17 points in that third quarter for Kawhi Leonard. And he and Serge put up 24 points between the two of them as the Raps outscored Golden State 37-21 to in the third quarter. Kawhi at 31 after three quarters. Raptors led 79-67. And from there, I mean, hey, what more do you want from the Toronto Raptors in that moment? You're going into the third quarter up 13 behind Kawhi Leonard just putting in mega, mega, mega work. And Nick Nurse making great adjustments. What more do you want from, from your team in that point? Your coach making great adjustments and your superstar being a superstar. Basically, when you look at the fourth quarter, hey, the Raptors made big run. The, Ma the Raptors did a good job of making a little bit of a run to extend the lead, get that lead to the 12 to 14 point mark. And then at that point, the Warriors are trying to come back, but the Raptors, again, they bent, but it didn't break. It got to 10 a couple times, but then Kyle Lowry would do such a good job of slowing down the tempo. And what have we talked about again? Go back to the Buck series, go back to our preview show heading into the NBA Finals, and we talked about the Raptors exposing the other teams on the pick and roll, right? They hunted the other team's bigs. So anytime Kyle Lowry saw one of the big guys, whether it was Bogut, whether it was Looney, whoever it was, you're getting in the pick and roll and you're getting exposed. And that's what Lowry did such a good job late in terms of finding Serge rolling to the basket, getting him a couple easy jumpers, or even Gasol, who then is able to make the pass and find an open player for three. It was a thing of beauty. Raptors just showed you why they are now one win away from the NBA Finals. <laughs> I could barely say it. 3-1 series lead in the NBA Finals. Raptors win 105-92. to Kawhi Leonard, 36 points in this game. 12 rebounds for Kawhi Leonard, four steals for Kawhi Leonard. Incredible performance. Also, we got to big up some other dudes, namely Serge Ibaka, putting up 20 points off the bench, 9 of 12. Serge gave massive minutes. Gasol also played very solid in this game. Nine points from Gasol, but he hit a big three. That three hit was massive. But also give him seven point, or seven rebounds, three assists in this game as well. And the thing we talked about, the thing that was a strength for the Raptors early on in the year was their center play and being able to combine the numbers of your two centers. And we told you as well, Marcus Gasol playing minutes, getting surge at like 20-something minutes, 
that's probably right where you want those guys to play. They're able to be active. They're able to go all out. They're able to box out. They're able to help on defense and recover. All those things you're able to do from your center spot with those two guys in the middle because they don't have to play big of minutes. It's a thing of beauty. Things are work looking good for the Raptors. One win away from the NBA Finals. Again, my name is Sheldon Alexander. Huge shouts to you guys for tuning in, whether you're on Twitter, at Shell Alexander, or on Instagram, at Sheldon Alexander. Let me get to some comments right now, because there's a lot of comments. Gordon says, Kyle says they're not going to be happy until the Raps get their fourth win. Of course, that's been their mindset. The Raptors haven't gotten ahead of themselves. I'm telling you, the demeanor of the vets in terms of Danny Green and Kawhi Leonard and Mark Gasol, the demeanor that the Raptors have taken on from those guys, it's incredible. They never get too high, never get too low. They stay in the moment, and they've stayed focused on what the end goal is. And the end goal has been championship, which I think has been very important. There was no happy-to-be-here type attitude from the Toronto Raptors from the conference finals and definitely not from the NBA Finals. Remember, Perk, Big Perk told us, right? Remember that. After Game 3, we read it at the end of the last podcast, and Kendrick Perkins, who's been doing a lot of media work lately, you know, trying to get his media game on, you might see him on either, you know, American channels, you might see him on Canadian channels, but he's everywhere. But I'm going to read this again, because this was key. This was after Game 3, and it just goes to the point that the Raptors are not satisfied until they get the chip. Kendrick Perkins after game three said, quote, I witnessed something very scary tonight after the game. Toronto were walking back to their locker room after the game and nobody was celebrating. They weren't smiling or nothing. They boys want the smoke. Take it from a former champ. I always tell you guys, there's a difference between people watching the game on their couch like me and you. There's a difference between people with their media passes who are also just watching the game. There's a difference between when you hear stuff from actual players. You take all those things. You put them all together and choose wisely in terms of who you listen to. But I really think that that right there from Kendrick Perkins was a big sign because it's just showing the demeanor of this Toronto Raptors team. Let me get to some more comments here. Uh, someone says, uh, don't the Warriors look average? I'm not going to say that. And I'm going to jump on this because uh, Maximus, I think is this person's name on Twitter. I'm going to jump on this because... This has been the okie doke when you've been watching the media. And I've been saying this for a while. When you're watching the U.S. media, it's more about, oh, Golden State's hurt. Oh, it's about who's in the lineup, who's not in the lineup. And even if you go back to the prior series, it was Giannis isn't ready yet. It was Joel Embiid was sick. Do they have the chemistry in Philly? Not enough credit was ever given to the fact that the Toronto Raptors are just really, really, really good. And we sit here and we've been watching the game. Again, you and I, all the people watching this podcast, we've been rocking with the Raps the whole year. We've watched every single game. And we've said from the get-go that this team has different gears. And when they lock in defensively, there's no one that can touch them in this league. And the Raptors have just shown it. One of the things I also told you guys, the Sixers series was the hardest series the Raps were going to have to go into. Just because of their length, the way that they play, they had some inside presence, they had some outside presence, they had Jimmy Butler, who was just a dog. But the matchups also gave them super length, superior length over the Raptors. So the Raptors' guards struggled in that series. Kawhi had to put on a superhero-like performance in that series, and you still took four bounces at the end of Game 7 to win. But after that, player for player, the Raps match up, and especially with no Kevin Durant on the Golden State Warriors, the Raps definitely match up. And this is just showing you the levels of superstars and stars. And Steph Curry had himself a great game in Game 3, and I know the stat line is going to say Steph Curry had 27 points uh, and six assists. He was two of nine from three and nine of 22 from the floor. It's a far cry from the 40 whatever Steph had in, in 47, I think he had in game three. Far cry from that. But I remember having arguments with people about this and they're talking about, oh, because Steph made the comment at the end of game three 
oh, we're missing, he said, we're missing damn near 50 points in the lineup. And I had arguments with people about this. I'm like, basketball doesn't work like that. That's such a dumb comment because it doesn't work like that. It's not like they scored 109 in that game. It's not like they were going to score 159. Right? Like, that's not how it works. Steph wasn't going to score 47 because he's not going to take as many shots. Clay was going to get some of those shots. So, from the start of the series, tried to tell everyone Steph and Clay have to go for like 35. And even if that happens, even if Steph and Clay both go for 35, that's only 70 points. Where are the other 40 to 50 points coming from? 40 points. Where are the other 40? Heck, I'd even say the other 30 to 40 points. Where are the other 30 to 40 points? So even if you let Steph and Clay go off for 35 a night, we said this from the preview show. Tape don't lie. Go back and watch it. Because there's a lot of people out here trying to talk ball, and I'm trying to tell you that certain things like there's people who are paying attention, and there's other people who are pretending. All I'm saying is it was math from the start of the series to now. Steph and Clay, let them go off, but where are the other points coming from? And you look at this game, Draymond Green gave them 10, and then you go to the bench and Looney, with one good arm, gave them 10. No one else in double, in double figures. I don't know, man. Again, I'm just a dude on Twitter. <laughs> so let's get to some more comments here. Someone says, uh, Logan says, I'd rather win in Toronto, though, LOL. Uh, let's see. Our defense is key as as key AF, I guess I should say. I'll edit myself there. <laughs> uh, fresh LA shook beside Clay. I'm scared of him, man. Hey, Clay hit big time shots. Clay on his bum hamstring hit big shots. But all that over celebrating, I'm just always here to remind you guys. Clay Thompson hurt himself flopping. Missed the end of game two, missed all of game three. Hurt himself flopping. Just here to remind you guys of that. And also then did the big boy walk, <laughs> Sam Cassell dance in the second quarter of an NBA Finals game and then took an L on his head top as Kawhi just gave him the business late. But hey, just here to remind you that. Uh, someone asked, uh, Gordon asked on Twitter, do you think Durant is going to play in the six? I'm on the record as saying I don't think Kevin Durant is going to play in the series. And I never really talked about this before, but a, about a week ago had a very interesting text convo in which there was a back and forth in which we were talking about someone said, I'm tiptoeing around how I say this, but the word was that Golden State, you know, they didn't really believe that Durant was going to be able to play in this series, but their training staff was trying some um, new, new-ish kind of therapy, like they're, they're, they're trying to, to, you know, do some different things, mess around with some different treatments, trying to come up with different ways to try to get Kevin Durant or to speed up his recovery, let's say. But they didn't really think he was going to come back. They're really going to try just some different shit to try to speed up his recovery. But from the outset, they didn't really think he was going to play. And, you know, even before I heard that, I didn't think Kevin Durant was going to play. Now, do you come back down 3-1 going back to Toronto? That's that's a tough place to drop Kevin Durant into that game. Cold, your first game in about a month is going to be in Toronto in an elimination game, and you have to guard Kawhi or Pascal Siakam? I mean, I hate to say this because I hate st sticking up for anyone on Golden State, but that's a tough position to put Kevin Durant in. If he does come in, come back, hey, more power to him. He's going down fighting. They don't want to have any excuses with the L. But I don't think he's going to come back. And I think that's a tough place. That's a tough position to put him in. Especially when you just got slapped. It's not like you, it's not like you just lost those two games at home. The Warriors got slapped in two games at home. Let's not beat around the bush about this, right? The Raptors walked into Oracle and slapped up Golden State in two straight games games i feel like that's an important part to to keep reminding ourselves of right one clay thompson hurt himself flopping two the raptors walked into oracle and slapped up golden state twice <laughs> what a time to be alive indeed let me get some comments here on instagram there's so many comments shouts to you guys our regulars always tuning in 
Definitely appreciate you guys. I was trying to scroll back up to the beginning because there's so many comments and I want to get to them all. Uh, I think I'm near at the top. Yes, here I am. So let's go. I'm going to start scrolling through. Apologies for people just tuning in now. But again, Raptors win 105-92 to take a three games to one series lead in the NBA Finals. They look to close things out Monday in Toronto for the NBA Championship. Wow. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Glow Girl Smile says, they stayed locked in the third quarter to win. That quarter is the way that Golden State usually does. It's true. They took a page out of Golden State's book. All playoff long, you know, whether it was in the Clippers series, the Rocket series, or the Blazers series, Golden State would come out in the third quarter and they'd make their run. And it happened to the Raptors once in this series, which was game two. But other than that, Again, credit Nick Nurse for making his moves when he did to slow down Steph Curry by bringing in Fred Van Fleet, who I hope is okay. We should touch on Freddie a little bit. As he left the game, he had to get seven stitches. I think he lost a tooth as well. And he got an elbow off, uh, I think it was Livingston. Livingston was going up, and as Livingston was landing, his elbow, like, he, he caught Freddie pretty bad. It was a good look for Freddie. I felt bad for him. And, you know, hopefully, I mean, he was, they said he was available when he came back. He was on the bench, but he didn't get back into the game. Raps didn't really need him, but hey, hopefully Freddie's okay for game five because he's been a massive part of this Raptors team ever since the Milwaukee Bucks series. So huge shouts to Freddie for sure. Uh, let's get to some more comments here. Uh, let's see. Logan says you got to look at Skip's Twitter right now. I'll check that out, obviously. Oh, Skip Bayless. I thought you were talking about Skip at Clean Cuts because huge shouts to Skip at Clean Cuts. But Skip Bayless, I mean, come on, he, guys. He, he's still trolling about the Kawhi Leonard thing. He's going to be forever salty, whatever. Forget about Skip Bayless. We need us to validate ourselves, Toronto, right? Choose wisely about who you listen to when they talk about basketball because there's a lot of people on the wave. There's a lot of people on the bandwagon. But... Ask them where their receipts are, what they were saying before the series started, what they were saying before the playoffs started, what they were saying during the regular season. Because I know, and if you guys were rocking with us here on the Wrap It Up podcast, there are a few themes that remained. Kawhi Leonard was the best player in franchise history. Kawhi Leonard was going to put in work come playoff time, so don't worry or don't get mad about load management because it's okay. It's not about the regular season. It's about the playoffs where you need them to cook. And it was about if the Raptors, with this team, they can make it to the NBA Finals. And they match up against anybody in the league. I'm on record as saying that all season long. And I know Kevin Durant's hurt, and we're always going to talk about the fake asterisk stuff, which I told you guys from last game, uh, miss me with all that talk, because ain't nobody talking asterisks when LeBron lost without Kyrie and, and uh, Kevin Love, and it was him, Mozgov, and Delhi roll into two wins in the NBA Finals against Steph, Draymond, and Iggy. No one was talking asterisks then. So you can miss me with that talk. But we've been telling you all year, hey, this Raptors team is legit, and this season was special. We did a full podcast the whole season <laughs> after each and every Raptors game, and it's leading to this. One win away from the NBA Finals. What a time to be alive indeed. Darren on Instagram says, what a resilient and determined team. It's true, man. They don't get down at all. Whenever Golden State would make a little run, and that building was loud. Like, that came through the TV. And I want to shout out the Raptors fans that were down there, too, because there were moments where you could hear the Raptors fans chanting, let's go Raptors, or chanting MVP when Kawhi was at the line. And flipping it over to Golden State, though, when they would go on little runs, because some of those shots that Steph and Clay hit, It'd be easy to get discouraged walking, watching some of those shots go down because they're shots that nobody else in the league makes. You could argue they're shots that nobody else in the history of the league makes. They're off balance. Sometimes it looks like they want to shoot and then they hesitate mid-shot, but then keep shooting and it still splashes. Those sometimes could be back-breaking shots, back-breaking plays. And you could see teams, I mean, we've seen it during this run of Golden State's team. You've seen other teams get broken by those runs because you think 
You're playing the best defense possible, and these guys are still winning threes over you. But this Raptors team takes on the mentality of Kawhi. They don't get too high. They don't get too low. Everything's going to be all right. And they they just handle every punch. And the one thing you got to remember about Golden State as well, how many times has, this t- has Golden State been punched in the face? Do you know what I mean? Think about their run. They've spent the majority of this run of the five years that they've had, right? Just running teams out of the gym. And how many times have they been punched? You could argue, obviously, LeBron and the Cavs coming back from 3-1 down. They didn't really handle that punch well. And then you could argue against Houston. And depending on which side you look at it, right? Houston just had to shoot the worst ever performance from three in the history of basketball to lose a game seven but the point that i'm trying to make here is how many times has this golden state warriors team been punched themselves and so we don't remember they're front runners how often do you see a team not not scared of them at all and all you needed was a talent to be close a little closer and then you could see what would really go down with this squad because they're not used to being challenged and the raptors definitely have challenged them uh let's see another comment here on instagram we not gonna lose three straight we gonna be the champs toronto faithful Stephen a smith on first take said even if golden state is down 3-1 and kd comes back and they have kd in clay he would still take golden state to win the series down 3-1 i couldn't disagree more but also, I'm hip to the game that Stephen A. Smith's playing, right? And shout to the Levitard show, because they talk about this all the time. Like, what they call the talking heads, the gas bags. And they talk about this all the time. But basically, the game as a gas bag is, I make a prediction. And if my prediction's wrong, it's not that I was wrong. It's that the team played bad, <laughs> right? So Stephen A. Smith is going to continue to ride with this whole Golden State, as long as they have KD and Clay, or as long as Clay comes back. Warriors are coming back and winning this series. But if you watched what he said after game two to game three, which was Boogie Cousins was amazing. And then after Boogie Cousins played bad, oh, Boogie Cousins is terrible. That's an unacceptable performance, blah, 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 blah. See how the blame shifts? That's the game. So I enjoy Stephen A. Smith because I'm entertained by him, but I'm hip to the game that he's playing. And salute to him because he is the most successful person doing that in the world right like the man's about to make 10 million dollars a year basically getting people mad at him (laughs) and i'm just entertained i'm super entertained by it but again i'm just trying to tell you guys to pay attention to the game of what a lot of these american talking heads are doing because you know it's just a game it's just a game it's all in fun uh let's get more comments d vad says stay focused on a mission been that way for a while Totally true about this Toronto Raptors. James says, what is this feeling I'm feeling? James, that's a great question. And (laughs) today at work was really weird because a bunch of people kept asking me, how do you feel about the game? And I was like, no, I feel super confident about the game. The only part of me that was kind of like worried was the whole Toronto weird mentality about how we can't have nice things. The basketball and everything was like, oh yeah, we're just better than these dudes, right? Like they don't have, like Steph and Clay. we don't believe you, you need more people. They can't score with us, they can't. So if the Raptors hit shots, they win. If the Raptors miss shots, they lose. But the Raptors could have missed shots in this game and Golden State still only put up 92 points. 92 points was is, isn't really going to beat the Raptors on most nights. It's just not. So, yeah, I mean, I was feeling kind of weird heading into this game. And even, but the way that the game went, because you could tell, you can tell what Kawhi Leonard is showing up pretty early. And he looked active early. Like he was on a mission that it was a Kawhi that was like, no, no, we're not losing tonight. I got us. That's a Kawhi that it looked like to me. More comments. I love how Lowry not showing emotion and keeping his eye on the goal. Totally true. Kyle Lowry, man. Kyle Lowry. Another one of those games, you're going to look at the box score and say, Kyle Lowry was 3 of 12. He only had 10 points in this game. Seven assists, though. 
four personal fouls. The stat sheet, that three of 12 for 10 points, doesn't really look good. But I'm going to give Kyle Lowry a lot of credit for down the stretch. There was no panic in the Toronto Raptors. They realized the mismatch that they had. Golden State was terrible on their rotations on the pick and roll. Serge was cooking. Serge was feeling. And Kyle just went to that pick and roll and made the right plays. He realized, again, he exposed their bigs, knew that he could get the blow by anytime he wanted on Golden State's bigs. And then at that point, let's pick your poison. Someone's going to come help, and either Kawhi or Danny are just ready to shoot. And shouts to Nurse because Danny Green hits one three in this game, but that was a very big three. And when you start 0 for 6 from 3 in a game, I love the fact that Danny Green doesn't get discouraged. Nick Nurse doesn't get discouraged by Danny Green missing shots. The Raptors players don't get discouraged by Danny Green missing shots because they know that he's going to keep shooting and he's going to knock down a big time shot because that is what Danny Green does. And he hit a massive three, massive three for the Raps. And it was at a point, I want to say coming out of a timeout when the Warriors are making another run and Kyle Lowry just finds Danny Green for an open three. Kyle Lowry did a great job again where he drove, found Kawhi for a wide open three. It was a very professional game from Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is the guy where, you know, stats don't show you everything. And I'm the one, I love Jay, the men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Kyle Lowry's numbers always lie. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but Kyle Lowry's numbers always lie. Three, you're going to look at his stat sheet and be like, oh, Kyle Lowry didn't play good. But he made big plays. He made the right decisions, Van, as Van Gundy was saying. Kyle Lowry made all the big plays down the stretch for the Raptors. It was incredible. Uh, Alex says, great win, but let's all take a deep breath. I don't want to be that guy, but the fourth game is always the hardest to win. Have to play just as hard next game. It's totally true. It's Golden State. It's still Klay Thompson. It's still Steph Curry. Like, they could have a game where they just both shoot the lights out. Like, that is totally possible come Monday night. And who knows if Kevin Durant plays. But I'll say this much. I trust this Toronto Raptors team with Kawhi Leonard, with the vets that they have, the other vets they have in that locker room, with exactly what we were just talking about with Kyle Lowry. The Raptors cannot be afraid of this moment. And... You have two days to rest up and think about the fact that you are going to be at home in front of your home crowd with a chance to win the NBA Finals. That is not something that comes very often. And if you're the Raptors, you have to take advantage of that. You have to. You have no choice. Cat Libby says, Serge Ibaka, bring in the energy when we needed it. Totally. That's what happens on the road. Got to agree. Uh, DJ Raymond says, Sheldon, came here to apologize. You are a wise man. You never doubted. DJ Raymond, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Huge shouts to you. And it, you know what? I'm going to be honest too. Like, I know sometimes I come off as if I'm trying to be like, yo, I was right. I was, and I don't mean to do that because I feel like part of the role I try to play is to calm down the fan base to just give you guys a little relax. It's okay. Our team is good. They play defense. We have a lot of vets. And I'm going to point this out because I'm going to bring up Siakam, right? Siakam, stat line, 19, 19 points, 6 of 14, add in 5 rebounds, got to the free throw line, hit 7 of 8 from the line. But Siakam, to me, is a, is he's the counter to Kawhi, Marcus Gasol, Danny Green, right? What I mean by that is, Pascal sometimes, when I'm talking about how calm and cool those guys are, Pascal sometimes has a tendency to be out of control. And at points where you're trying to take a lead from 12 to 14 or stop a run, sometimes he's out of control driving into three guys, trying to make a tough layup when you could pull it out, run a play, and do something just a little bit different and get a better shot than forcing it over three guys. But again, as I've been saying all year, I can't be that hard on Pascal because Pascal has surpassed everybody's expectations. Pascal is putting in, putting up numbers in the NBA Finals with a lot of pressure on him. He showed up. And 
a lot of his success is due to his pace, his motor that he just keeps going. The only thing I'll say is I like to see him get more than five rebounds. We need him on the glass. But with that said, hey, it's tough to get boards when we got the board man also out here getting snatching down rebounds like it's his job, right? Board man gets paid, right? Uh, <laughs> I see a comment here from my guy Goody <laughs> that I'm going to text him after. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well played, Goody. Well played. You made me laugh in the middle of this. Uh, Brenton. What up, Brenton? That's my guy from way back. Shout out to the dub. Brenton says, uh, does it matter about KD now? I mean, it matters, but I just think it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. And while Klay Thompson might be the best example of this, Klay Thompson, you know, his hamstring was a problem. You know that, you know, you saw him during the game. There's one point where he went to the bench. He's kind of limping and they retaped his hamstring, but he was still able to get his shots off and he shot really well. Kevin Durant might be able to come back and do something like that. The difference is, you didn't get the same defense from Klay Thompson that you're used to. And also, how is he going to react the next day? Same thing with Kevon Looney. Remember, we saw Boogie Cousin come, coming off injury. Boogie had a pretty solid game as well. But it's how does your body react coming off of injuries the day after the game? Two days after the game. That's what we're going to wonder about Klay Thompson. Kevin Durant coming back? Who knows what that means? Again, I don't think he's going to come back. But... Even with KD in the lineup, I just can't see the Raptors losing three straight games, including two home games, to the Golden State Warriors. I know they're the Warriors. I know that. But I still just think that it's a math game. And at a certain point, it's going to have to be someone other than Clay and Steph getting you 20 points. And I don't know who that is, whether it's Draymond, whether it's Iggy, whether it's Boogie, whether it's Alfonso McKinney. Like, at the end of the day, Alfonso McKinney was giving them, like, energy and good minutes, but it's Kawhi going against them. Like, that dude was on Raps 905 last year, and Kawhi is Kawhi. <laughs> That's not fair to Alfonso McKinney. So, it's not even a matter of crushing McKinney or Quinn Cook or any of those dudes, but, hey, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. Tammy says, OMG, are we really just one win away? We are just one win away from an NBA championship, Tammy. Just one win away. It's crazy. I have to keep repeating it myself as well. Raptors lead the series three games to one. 105-92. What? Craziness. Len says, so are we really one game away from winning the Larry O? Somebody pinch me. There's a lot of that in the chat. Uh, By Noir says, elite. Kawhi is not a superstar. That boy is elite. Totally true. DVAD says, for those of us who know this team, we've been watching all season. We knew this could happen. Sensed all year things were different this year. I'm a fan. Always have been. It's true. DVAD saying it, man. We were talking about it all year. It's just different. This is not other Raptors teams. And so when the, when the playoffs were, you know, once the Raps got past Philly, once you're in the Bucks series, once you're in this series, we're trying to tell you, all this American media and even a lot of the Canadian media, they didn't really watch the Raptors as much as they pretend to. So they're talking about the team, but, you know, they're pulling out stats. They're talking about all these things when how much can you really take from the Raptors stats during the season when Kawhi missed like 20, what, 22 games? Right? Kyle missed like 20 games. Do you know what I'm saying? So the stats are going to tell you a little something, but there's another level to what this team was. And so as good as all their stats were, whether it's defensive rating, offensive rating, you know that they were better than that because a lot of their guys didn't play for the majority of the season. But that stretch, after Marcus Gasol got on the team and they had that run where they were the best three-point shooting team in the league, when that was going down, hey, some of us were here telling, telling you guys, it's just different. This team was built to make a run. And from the top down, man, Masai to Nick Nurse to even Kyle Lowry, the way that he's figured out all the pieces, the way that Kawhi just, I mean, after getting through the Philly series, it's like the rest of the team gained a little more confidence. They were like, oh, we're here to help Kawhi. 
And it's just been it's been an incredible thing to watch. I don't know what's going on right now, but Kyle and Serge are doing a lot of laughing on the podium. Kyle looked like he just left Serge to go <laughs> to finish the podium on his, on his own because obviously Serge had a big boy game. Let's get to some more uh, comments here. Coach Nurse said that Kawhi started the third quarter with two threes and the Raps kept it going from that point. Totally true. Kawhi was in carry mode until his teammates woke up. Kawhi's a beast, man. That boy's a problem. That man is a problem. Uh, Kawhi wanted to be known as a great player. This playoffs is doing just that. Totally true. Another comment. When your chance of MVP for Kawhi at the free throw line, you have to appreciate the Raptors fan, break, fan base. Totally true. Rock DTV, I'm going to give a huge shout out here because Rock DTV says, watching game five at the Cineplex Theater in Calgary. This is an, a, an important moment for this country. Because here's the thing, okay? I'm telling you guys because I work in the industry, so I've been in meetings where they've talked about basketball ratings and what they mean and how many people actually watch basketball and what they put money into and what people care about. And <laughs> there's been a lot of conversations where people didn't believe that outside of Toronto, people cared about basketball, which to me was always a crazy conversation because I always bring up the fact that Mississauga has just as many people as Winnipeg and Edmonton. That's an, a story for another day. I don't know. I just say that's the okie doke that the lies that they try to like perpetuate that nobody cares about basketball outside of Canada, but or outside of Toronto, but whatever. Forget about that for a second. Because the point I'm trying to make here is they showed it on ABC. They showed a viewing party in Saskatchewan. I don't really think that anybody thinks that Saskatchewan's a hotbed for basketball in this country. But they showed a viewing party in Saskatchewan. There's viewing parties in Calgary. There's viewing parties in Vancouver. What other team in the league, in all of Canadian sports, would say that they're able to have viewing parties in multiple cities across the country? I'll wait until someone comes up with the answer. But we're seeing it right now. This is incredible. This is an incredible moment that there's some of us have known exists. Right? That this was possible in terms of the fan base actually showing that they exist. And this is an, a great moment with this team being one win away from the NBA Finals. And the job's not done. The job's not done. One win away from the NBA Championship. One win away from winning the NBA Finals. I keep messing up and saying one win away from the NBA Finals. <laughs> because to me, this is still such a great moment and so incredible. But let me finish out with a couple more comments because I do love reading the comments and thanking you guys for tuning in. Uh, let's see. Susan says, such a big win sweeping them in Oakland. Thank you, Susan, for bringing that up because that is a massive point. The Raptors just won two games in Golden State and they dummied them in both games. That's incredible. That's crazy. Uh, another comment. Warriors had a 14-point lead near the end of the second quarter, but then Kawhi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great way to sum things up, no? This Raptors team, man, this Raptors team, there's fans from everywhere, and I, I want to talk about that a bit because we had this fun project with the, the Fun Guy t-shirts, and it was cool for me because, you know, I get a chance to do this podcast, and obviously I get a chance to interact and read comments from people who... I see the names, the same names that have been popping up all year, and you see the numbers start to grow, and it's really cool. But what the t-shirts did was it gave me a chance to see how far-reaching this was. Like, I've sent shirts to Winnipeg, sent shirts to Vancouver, sent shirts to D.C., sent shirts to Pennsylvania, Calgary, like, all over this country, all over North America. And that, to me, is incredible but it was also just such a like, you know, I had to take a step back and, and realize just how lucky I am to be able to do this and have so much fun. And the level of enjoyment that I've gotten from this season, being able to share it with all of you guys with this, you know, we said we we're trying to turn a group text into a podcast and that's kind of been the feel. Me getting to enjoy this massive group text, it's been so much fun, man. And I want to really thank you guys for being along for this ride as the Raptors are now one win away from winning an NBA championship. A couple more comments here to round us out. Uh, Ragul says, even if KD does come back, he's not going to be able to play full 48 minutes. 
It's totally true. KD, even if he comes back, he has to be on a minutes restriction. And there's no way that he wasn't even able to practice two days ago, and he's going to play, what, 30 minutes in an NBA Finals game? I don't know, man. Good luck with that. Uh, let's see, some more comments. Sheldon, that looked like he accelerated with the elbow at the end of the fall. Watch the video again. I don't really think so. I think Sean Livingston was just landing, and he just caught Freddie in the wrong place. Like, I don't, I'm not going to say that. I don't think Sean Livingston is that kind of guy, that kind of player. And I think it was just a freakish accident. And, you know, hopefully Freddie's okay, and he's able to bounce back and play in game five. But I don't think it was intentional at all. Another comment. Let's remember, the Raps took both games during the season, even with KD going for 51 points. That is a great point and a great reminder. Again, some of us are here watching basketball, taking in basketball in the Raptors, and other of us, others are just tuning in now and jumping on the wave. And hey, we accept everybody. Just watch out for the pretenders. Uh, this comment I gotta read. We the blood clot north. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a very Toronto, <laughs> a very Toronto comment there. Um. And another comment, job not over yet, but what a great ride, Raptors fans. Oh, man. One win away. Huge shouts, you guys. I can't get to all the comments here on Instagram, but really appreciate you guys for tuning in and rocking with us, especially on Instagram. This feed is about to go down, but I'm about to wrap up the podcast anyways. Huge shouts to you guys. Want to thank you guys again for tuning into this Wrap It Up podcast. 105-92 Toronto Raptors win in Golden State to take a three games to one series lead in the NBA Finals. Kawhi Leonard leading the way again. 36 points, 12 rebounds, four steals because that's what Kawhi Leonard does. Golden State side, Klay Thompson returned, 28 points, 11 of 18 shooting, and a Sam Cassell big boy dance in the second quarter that meant absolutely nothing. Because again, I will remind you guys at every turn, Klay Thompson missed the end of game two and the whole of game three because he injured himself trying to flop. Warriors down 3-1. Who knows if KD's coming back, but either way, the Raptors look to close things out Monday night in Toronto. What a time to be alive indeed. Thank you for tuning in with me as you have all season long on Twitter at shell alexander same thing goes for instagram at sheldon alexander and of course if you don't already like and subscribe to the podcast please find us and support support the podcast you know whether it's on itunes soundcloud google play and on youtube like and subscribe tell your friends grow this wrap it up on blast podcast movement because we the north we hear we hear and we're heard raptors win big things like and subscribe to the pod. Just search On Blast Podcasts on all those platforms and you will find this feed, which is a Wrap It Up podcast. One win away. One win away from an NBA championship. I don't know if I've said this and meant it more, but I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up On Blast Raps postgame show. As always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time. When the Raptors try to close things out and win an NBA championship. See ya. Oh,